Okay, welcome back to the class. So, what did I uh, do in the last class? That <coughs> we have synthesized a a dye, if you will, or a fluorescent signaling system that can detect up to three ppb of mercury two in water. Okay, and that particular dye is 100 percent, almost 100 percent cell viability up to a very concentrated solution. Okay. We did that cell viability versus concentration we plotted and it is very close to 100 percent viable, means there will be no cell damage that is a viability. So, it is almost like this for a large concentration. That particular concentration we tried about 5.0 micromolar, micromolar. Okay. That is quite a lot. This is our so and then, so what we did? We have this compound in and then we charge that into HEC 293 cell lines and after some time we charged mercury also. And then wherever mercury went, it started glowing because it interacted with this fluorescent signaling system and then broke the spiro bond and gave a large fluorescence and that can be detected in confocal microscopy. So, this experiment that I am describing you and we talk that is called in vitro, okay, in vitro studies. So, this is in vitro study. But we can make in case of a person is poisoned with something, okay. For example, it will be fun, it will be very interesting to synthesize an arsenic arsenic detecting fluorophore, fluorescent or arsenic uh, signaling fluorophore system. Okay. Then what will happen? If uh, there is an arsenic in water, we can detect. So, these are very important biologically and environmentally, environmental. And the picture that the follow up that confocal microscopic photographs I am not able to show it from previous lecture, but uh, you take my word for it and I will possibly I will upload them. Okay. So, we have, we have seen that krypton based fluorescent signaling system, we can have specificity for some specific metal ions. Previously, we saw cadmium and now we see mercury. So, now let us see anions, okay, anions. For example, in our physiological processes, both phosphate, phosphate, say HPO4, 3 2 minus or even PO4 3 minus, these are the, these compounds are metabolites and pyrophosphate P2O7. Okay. So, PO4, P2O7, these are, these are physiological byproduct, okay, metabolites. So, looking at how much PO4 at a how much PO4 say PO4 minus 3, how much PO4 and how much P2O7, I think P2O7 is P2O7, all right, I do not worry about the charge in case I make a mistake, so I will not write. 
So, how much P 2 of 7 and P 2 P O 4 phosphate are present? We can find them by fluorescence method. Okay. So, for that we need specific receptor. So, this receptor is yeah, this was H 2 minus huh, and pyrophosphate I think P 2 O 7 2 minus 2 minus or 4 minus whatever it is I am not writing this that is why yeah, I think it is 2 minus anyway. So, I am writing 2 2 uh, fluorescent signaling system one for phosphate one for uh, pyrophosphate for phosphate Okay. So, for, phosph for phosphate this one NH trees 3 amino propylamine. One NH two now NH three is acidified NH three plus this is also plus thin one two three NH three plus and this is one Two, three, there. So this is my compound, okay. And this compound with pyro with phosphate. Okay. This particular compound what will happen? This binds this binds here in this place and this is the structure. This is the structure. Okay, this is plus and there basically I mean 1, 2, 3 and then N H 3 is also plus. So, my phosphate, my phosphate will hydrogen bond here here with here, here and it will stay here OH. So, it will make hydrogen bond 
and because of hydrogen bond this also become plus okay this is also become plus nh yeah this becomes plus also how uh, nh2 okay so this is become plus also because these become plus so therefore this will there will be no pt from this nitrogen there will be no pt to this anthracene moiety if the pt is stopped then there will be strong fluorescence so therefore the basic thing is all these things means basic thing is to this fluorophore i made a phosphate recognizing moiety that's all and that phosphate recognizing moiety is tris 3 amino uh, amino propyl amine tris 3 amino propyl amine and those all these amines were protonated okay because they were protonated so it recognizes so reco and their shape and size is such that it recognizes a phosphate anion and it does how about pyrophosphate so similarly pyrophosphate are guanidinium based let me show you pyrophosphates are pyrophosphate pyrophosphate i am writing the uh, what happens I am not writing the compound, I am writing the complex with pyrophosphate. Let me draw it first before saying anything. O then O pyrophosphate has POP bonds, so that is what I have done. O then P double bond O. O O okay and guanidinium mode so hydrogen nitrogen hydrogen carbon nitrogen so this is guanidinium mo moiety n plus okay this is okay and then hydrogen hydrogen okay this is like this and this pyrene, pyrene moiety, pyrene moiety is the fluorophore this then. I write it like this and I write it ok fine. Let me draw this without wasting time like this and similar one is here also. Let me draw this as a ok I will draw it properly hydrogen, hydrogen then nitrogen, hydrogen, okay. nitrogen, hydrogen plus, okay, and then nitrogen and this pyrene moiety 
okay, pyrene moiety. All right. Okay, so this pyrene moiety, what happens when the pyrophosphate, the mechanism, when the pyrophosphates are bound to this guanidinium moiety containing pyrene, pyrene is your fluorophore, pyrene because it is a large surface area of pi surface area, large pi surface is a large pi surface. So, it has a strong tendency to pi stack. So, therefore, when it is a pyrophosphate, they come closer, then these two will come closer and then they make a, they make a dimer. So, in the, uh, in the previous one class, I told you that when excited state dimers are there, we call them excimer. So, it will give you, it will give you an excimer very strong excimer around 500. So, it will give you a very strong excimer because it makes a dimer, there are two there, all right. So, from dimer uh, excimer, you know that this pyrophosphate has, has linked to two of this fluorophore, fluorophore signaling system. In this case, only one fluorophore signaling system binds phosphate. So, from these two, these two experiments, I mean these two different uh, fluorophore signaling system, fluorescent signaling system, we can detect the amount of phosphate and amount of pyrophosphate present in human body at a particular instant. So, we can have an idea about the physiological process going on. So, this is a very important thing. Okay, so, we have done quite a few uh, anion sensing, there are many anion sensing also. Previous day, we did carbonate sensing, so these are phosphate, pyrophosphate sensing. So, there are many, many different uh, uh, anion sensing agents are there and they work on the same principle. All right, so, after we did such well, they did many, many compounds and uh, when they form compound, they are quite stable and they are happily there. So, they are always, when the light is on, it is always on, fluorescence is always on, but we want reversibility. So, how to bring in reversibility of fluorescence? So, let me draw reversibility of fluorescence this will, this is my next uh, topic of discussion. Well, some cases I saw, I showed you reversibility, but I want my fluorescent signaling system reversible with transition metals. Okay. So, reversibility of fluorescence. fluorescence signaling. We have chosen, we have synthesized this compound, two of them, I am writing both. I am writing both compounds here.
it will be really very important if you can make reversibility. So, we made this compound while working on bio inorganic chemistry which I did for some time, we came to know that this moiety train we came to know that train train likes to bind or say prefers train prefers to bind prefers copper 2 plus. So, if I have both, both these compounds, and say methyl group, thioether, okay. I have this thioether, so they uh, both are there. If we both are present in the system in a say test tube and I and I put copper 2 plus, copper 2 plus will be will get bonded to train exclusively, but this moiety pref, uh, prefers copper 1. copper 1 plus. So, this knowledge we had all right. So, now you see how this compound, how this knowledge can be used for having a fluorescent signaling system. So, we made, we went ahead and made, made this fluorescent signaling system. Okay, we went and made this fluorescent signaling system. Okay. We made this system and then we took copper, we took copper 2. So, let us put copper 2. So, now cartoon, now we resort to cartoon. I will write this way. sulfur nitrogen 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 chlorophore chlorophore 
chlorophore. I put copper, copper is here. When copper is here, this lone pair is engaged to copper. Remember those days when I discussed the fluorescent signaling of transition metals, this lone pair they are engaged. So, P T is off, P T is off, fluorescence is on when it is copper 2 plus. Now, what do I do? I reduce this copper 2 with, uh, I reduce this copper 2 to copper 1 with this uh, weak reducing agent sodium acetoxy borate. OSE, okay. OSE 3, it will be 3. NABH OSE 3. So, this is what is this uh, uh, reducing agent? It is a very mild reducing agent. We have seen that this can reduce copper 2 to copper 1. So, when I, re when I add this, when I add this, so we see very high fluorescence when copper 2 is here. Now, as soon as we give this reducing agent, after some time what happens? All copper 2 is converted into copper 1 and being copper 1, they will be here. Nitrogen, copper 1 moves and copper 1 is here this is empty chlorophore fluorophore fluorophore okay so fluorophore is there so copper one is here so now if i excite it what happens because of pt pt will take place pt so therefore no fluorescence. So, I first see, first there was nothing, so no fluorescence. Then I put copper 2, I see strong, uh, I see very strong fluorescence. Then I reduce it, copper 2 to copper 1 and what happens? It comes down to 0 fluorescence. Now, I leave it in the air in air see copper 2 copper 1 in air is not very stable unless you give acetonitrile so we give thf so it was not say, not uh, stable copper 1 copper 1 will be oxidized to copper 2 again as soon as it goes to copper 2 it comes here and when it comes here then again lone pair will be engaged to copper 2 and we see strong fluorescence, fluorescence on and off like this. So, keep on like this. So, chemically we can reduce copper 2 to copper 1 and it goes from here to here and when you leave it in air, it comes from here to here on its own. Everything is happening inside the cavity inside the cavity everything is happening okay so copper is moving from one end to the other when it goes to the, this end i see strong fluorescence when it comes here to this end i see no fluorescence so this by simply by hard soft acid base principle and the coordination tendency of copper 2 plus and copper 1 plus we can play with it and get a and get a reversible fluorescence signaling system okay so these things are very important for making molecular machines so i stop here today and next time i will uh, from this point onwards i will elaborate again okay and go to other systems thank you very much